So at 6.03, we have a quorum, so we can call the meeting to order. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? I, I just... I just want to add one thing. Uh, I'd like to note that we have Jason Neely here as a guest. He is one of the uh, NRTC engineers that has been working with us uh, at least twice a week in person, face to face, if, if, if you will, electronically, if not more. And uh, he's here tonight and we will be calling on him to uh, talk about our construction scheduling later on in the, in the, in the process. Uh, and one other thing I'd like to do, I, I, one thing I want to bring out, and I, I really want to just say thank you for the cooperative effort that I've been seeing as we've been working through all of the all of the multiple things that we've been working through here. Uh, the, the spirit of cooperation is just phenomenal, I, I, and I just wanted to put that out there before we even get started, uh, and just give a thank you to all involved because we wouldn't be able to move forward otherwise. And I very much appreciate it and notice it. So thank you for that. Is there any public comment? Hearing none, let's move on to the meeting minutes. Approval, Jeremy, please. Uh, yeah, just a sec. Uh, so motion to approve the July 12th, 2022 uh, board meeting minutes as drafted. Second. Motion seconded by Siobhan. Is there any opposition? Any abstention? It's unanimous then. The motion's moved. Thank you. Is our treasurer here? We'd like to have the treasurer's report next. How about if I do the treasurer's report? Why don't you do the treasurer's report, Ray, as so, chair of the finance committee? Thank you. So on the treasury report we have on the screen here, hopefully you're seeing uh, expenses. Um, and through July, there were $432,000 worth of expenses that were paid. Uh, so far in August, we've paid another 12,500 some odd dollars. Our bank account at the end of July was $3.9 million. Um, uh, the balance through this today is three point, uh, under that $3.9 million. We have some outstanding invoices totaling around $170,000, which will be taken up by the executive committee Thursday night. Questions, comments? Excellent. Thank you, Ray. Uh, let's move on to the uh, executive director's report. Uh, Janiel, if you could just give an update on just just pick five of the fifty things that you know the top five, okay? <laughs> oh, we have three pallets being delivered to our new warehouse on Friday. We have uh, someone accepting those pallets of materials and goodies into our new warehouse. Um, we uh, um, we have an RFP out for marketing. We're interviewing all those firms between Thursday and Tuesday of this week. It's marketing and public engagement. Um, so we're, we're well on our way to doing that. We have construction construction RFP that's out and we're getting ready to award construction um, to start as early as October. <laughs> we have a lot of make ready going on right now. Um, we've been trimming trees in the WEC territory. WEC has been doing that for us and doing pole make ready. Um, Gosh, there's 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 a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> we're we've we've got the 400 miles of uh, materials ordered, and we also have more fiber coming at the end of this month that will be delivered to the WEC um, territory. So. Um, we also, I visited the, uh, the, the new spaces today and we have, uh, gravel being put down on a new raw land lot yard in Montpelier, um, uh, picked up the keys. Um, so yeah, we're, we're boots on the ground, really getting into operational mode. <laughs> Uh, uh, any any questions for Janiel? Things are moving forward and moving forward uh, very quickly. 
This is Henry. Janiel, you're doing an amazing job. And I, you know, I'm sure that's only the top of the iceberg. And so, you know, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I also wanted to congratulate David Healy. <laughs> <laughs> We are doing incredible with town reach outs in general. We've, we've had a lot of towns commit funds. David Healy was successful in getting $200,000 from Callis last night, which will be matched by VCBB for another $200,000, which means that we now have to borrow or pass on in subscription rates $400,000 less. That is huge. So congratulations and thank you, David. And thank you to everybody who's been doing this amazing reach out to the town we're just we're just so lucky to have this commitment from these towns. Thank you. Can I can I ask what Callis's total payout was? What their total was? Uh, David, you're muted. Yeah, they had four hundred seventy nine thousand. Okay, and cool. Yes, it is. The, this is typical of some of the towns that haven't done anything yet. Yes, they're sitting on the money, and I told them about the September fifteenth deadline, and that. So they went yeah. out of their process to make this decision. So it was, I was pretty happy, <laughs> to say the least. I have a second. Excellent. RD, I see your hand is up, but you also appear to be on the phone. I'm sorry. Can you hold for a moment? Um, yes. Oh. Now you're on mute. <laughs> you're on mute and you're frozen. There you go. Nice word. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, never mind my free. Never mind frozen. Uh, um, do we have MOUs for the towns that have committed funds? Yes. Yes. The answer is every one of the towns who have even shown an interest in committing funds have received MOUs. All right. Are there are there other questions, David? You have a question, but you're on mute, sir. Select board meeting last night, the town has already had the agreement reviewed by a lawyer and they said they made some changes. I have not seen what they've added to it, but they also promised to send the commitment letter by tomorrow. So fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. Are there other uh, Ray? Go ahead, please. One day on that uh, Northfield Select Board has asked me to uh, join the meeting tonight. This is the second meeting. And they're feeling the September 15th deadline. Um, I don't know what we're going to get, if anything, but um, there's one or more members of the select board that are very interested in this. It's not universal. Understood. Um, other other comments, questions for Janiel and the executive director's report? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Janiel. Uh, the next item is a budget adjustment. And that is a Jerry fat finger mistake. Um, I, I, I actually, when, when I was reading what had passed before, um, and I saw the budget line item that we approved, I think two months ago now for materials and materials management. Well, and in between those two, it said warehouse. And I leaned over it, didn't see it, was, was corrected by others, thank you. I should always be corrected by others. Uh, so there really is no budget adjustment that, that needs to be done uh, because we've already allocated uh, sufficient funds for this, for this budget year uh, to carry our warehousing, which we uh, got a pretty good deal, by the way. So with, with that, I'd like to, uh, to move over to Alan, who unfortunately has to do this by phone. Alan, I hope this will be all right for you. Uh, but there are some uh, yeah. policy committee recommendations that we'd like to discuss. Right. I think the connection will be okay. I'm working on a battery phone, so uh, we'll see if this works long enough for me to explain the stuff. You so sound good. We're, we've got two different documents to consider tonight. One is adoption of a net neutrality policy. The other is adoption uh, of a board delegate attendance rule. Let's start with the net neutrality policy one first. I sent around a short note when I sent out the documents explaining that this is the first of several policies that the policy committee feels should be in place uh, as we approach construction of the network. 
the policy that we drafted on net neutrality is based uh, on the Vermont net neutrality law, which was passed in 2017. And it was passed in response to the uh, dropping by the SCC of the net neutrality rules that had been put in place during the Obama years. But then when a new commissioner of the FCC came in, the FCC turned in, in its attitude about net neutrality and the rules got rules got um, uh, they weren't exactly eliminated. There were some rule changes made that just made them inoperable. So what the state of Vermont did was to adopt the standards. There were basically three of them that were in the FCC rules and put them in a statute, and I sent that a copy of that around this afternoon because a couple of people had wanted to see the specific language of it. And basically what the state did was they said, okay, here are the standards uh, that we feel Vermont should be following if it wants to be considered net neutral, net neutrality. And it added two more uh, standards as well. So when you look at the policy, the first three things uh, that come up, uh, the the to, to that end, CV Fiber pledges that it will not and block, block lawful content, impair or degrade lawful internet traffic, and number three, engage in paid prioritization. Those were the core SCC regs. The state of Vermont just picked them up and made that the starting point for their particular statute. And then four and five were things that uh, the state itself. Uh, came up with and added to the first three standards. So there are basically five different standards that a provider has to meet in order to be able to apply and receive what's called net neutrality certification. It's, the state will, will certify that the provider is uh, abiding by the state's net neutrality statute, and it's, uh, I think it's the best way for us to come up with a policy that gives us something immediately in return and that we are considered certified once we make application that we are net neutral. So I'll stop talking and see if anybody else from the policy committee wanted to say anything or uh, if we wanted to have a discussion about this generally. Anybody else on the policy committee uh, want to uh, Jeremy, Matt, Jeremy Matt has his hand up. I'll, I'll, I guess I need to call on people for you, Alan, since you can't see. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry about that. Jeremy, please go ahead. Uh, Rd did have his hand up before me. I don't know. Rd's hand then. has been up since Sam. before. No, I, I, it, it is up, uh, Jerry. Uh, it is up for this topic. Oh, okay, it didn't go down from the last one, so it, I, I'm you, sorry. I, I'm have I have two devices to manage, if I may. Um, um, can you give Alan? Can you give an example of reasonable network management? Uh, which part of the which part of the uh, policy are you looking at, RD? Okay, um, I'm looking at the uh, definition. Definition oh, five: yeah, reasonable the, network management. In number one, uh, I cannot give a definition of that, and I'm looking at the statute to see yeah. if there's any other detail, and uh, all it says is blocking lawful content application services or non-harmful devices subject to reasonable network management. So I think what reasonable network management, what this implies is that something that has to be done uh, and it blocks lawful content, but not out of the desire to do so on a permanent basis, but because there is something wrong with the network that has to be fixed and therefore some content might be unavailable while a repair is made. That's what I'm assuming it is. Okay. Um, right. I think I, I think another thing that might fall into that would be something like v during very high use times, 
if we're short on bandwidth, something like, you know, YouTube might get throttled to the point where you can't watch a high def video or something along those lines. But that would be something like there are too many people on the network all at once trying to get too much data um, and that would need to be kind of spread out. So, you know, but I, I think that's what that the intent of that statement is at any rate. Okay. Is, is there any, um, like case law that in, in that, that would help us understand or, or provide illustrations of reasonable network management? No. Okay. Rds okay. Uncharted that's, territory. Actually, that's actually a good question generally. Cause one of the things I did was I started looking at some studies and some reports that have been done about what exactly has been the reality of how uh, net neutrality has worked or hasn't worked and what have the problems been. And the reports that I read basically said there is not enough data or uh, uh, information that's come in generally to come to any conclusions about what kind of a situation we're really in with net neutrality or the lack of net neutrality. And I think that's only been extended since the Biden administration has talked about reinstating the net neutrality rules, but that hasn't happened so far. So as far as I can tell, there hasn't really been much change in what's been happening since the rules were uh, suspended, essentially, during the Trump administration. And it's very hard to know exactly what the impact uh, has been, if any. Jeremy, you you want to uh, take your turn here? Yeah, I, I just said that uh, it allows us to apply for the net neutrality certification. I think it's a no-brainer to uh, to for it. I mean, it's kind of part of statute, and I think it should be something to kind of rubber stamp. Uh, understood. Siobhan and then Ray. Yeah, I just wanted to um, add on top another example, RD, might be somebody who sets up a server farm to serve, say, a game or some other thing that ends up being very popular and receiving a great deal of Internet traffic and that having an impact on the broader network itself and us needing to make a decision about that particular instance and saying, okay, well, you have to pay the higher tier business thing or something like that because it's having a significant impact and that's not the tier of service you're paying for, that kind of thing. You got it. Okay, Ray, you had your hand up? Yeah, so just briefly, and that, and that is that you can expect that the law is going to be defined reasonable as the best practice and that best practice will evolve over time and that you have to keep up with that best practice so that it's not going to go to the lowest common denominator as to what is uh, reasonable. It'll go to what is technically in practice at the time and that will that will improve over time. You know, we're gonna have a 100 gig backbone, for example, right? And so um, yeah, our standards are probably a little bit different from somebody with a 10 gig backbone, but somebody with a 100 gig backbone has the ability to do more, right? And and, and with more traffic than with others. So that, that'll be my input on that. Uh, David Lawrence has his hand up and, and Ray, you just took yours down. Okay, David? Uh, yeah, all I was going to say was that situation with somebody running a server from their home is typically prohibited by the uh, end user consumer agreements. Um, and that would be the difference between the business tier and all. So, I, you know, I think that's going to be kind of, there's a really well established standard for the way that ISPs handle this. That's a good point. Thank you. Uh, so, Alan. Let, let me ask you a question. Um, are we going to do this by two separate votes, one for each policy? I believe that's appropriate. Yeah, I think we should do that. <clears throat> I can make a motion now to adopt the um, uh, draft of the net neutrality, the CD fiber net neutrality policy. <clears throat> Second. Second. Is that something you could paste in chat? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I move to, to uh, approve the <clears throat> draft. CV fiber net neutrality policy. <clears throat> Second. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> oh, okay. So that's how the game is played. Interesting. All right. And and Alan does not have the ability to do chat at the moment because he's doing everything off of his uh oh, his right. cell phone. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, uh, right. Is there any more? I'm sorry. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. A any more discussion on this point? All right. Let's vote on the motion. Are there any opposed to the motion? Seeing none opposed, any abstention? I don't hear any abstention. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, excellent, excellent work. Thank you, everybody. This is this is extremely important. Uh, yeah, Alan, would you right. please continue? Yeah. The next uh, the next document is a uh, what's what is labeled a board delegate attendance rule. Um, I'll have Ray and or I, I don't know if Chris Shank is on the call or on the uh, uh, Zoom call now, but they're the ones, uh, Chris and Ray were the ones who, who who thought of some language that could use be used to address the problem we've been having with uh, delegates or alternates not showing up at meetings very often, some actually not coming for long periods of time. And originally, I think they had uh, thought this could be a policy and what I suggested to do was to make it into a rule uh, in our rules of procedure, CV5 or rules of procedure, because that's really where we have all the, all, the, all the rules about how we operate as an organization, delegate responsibilities, and so forth and so on. And they agreed to that, and we, I, I helped uh, come up with some language that took what they had done and, to, and turned it into a rule uh, that has – as you can see, an opening paragraph explaining why this is important and how CV fiber is negatively impacted by it and feels we have to take some action. And then there are five different steps um, that, that can be taken uh, when absences become habitual. And, Ray, uh, do, you want to, do you want to take over from there? Do you, do you want to explain anything about your thinking sure. generally and the idea of progressive notification or anything sure. else? Okay. I'd be happy to. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Jeremy has a hand up, though, so if he's got a question we could address now. Sure. Uh, sure. Or, I mean, it's, it's more of a suggestion. I, I emailed um, Alan, but then just thought of this recently. So I don't know if you want to talk about it a little bit more, and then I can make my suggestion, or if you want to. Let me uh, uh, go, let me go through some stuff here, and then we can do that. Okay. But, um, first of all, I'm going to start by thanking Jeremy Matt for collecting this data uh, that we see on <laughs> here, and um, and you may have noticed that this information, uh, the attendance information, is in our minutes, in our board minutes, uh, so you can see who's there and who isn't there. But this is this reflects the last year's worth of attendance by delegates and alternates and what the uh, uh, how much they are participating. The important part of the delegate and alternate is that um, they bring to the board meeting information about their particular community. And secondly, all of us have a, a wealth of experiences that uh, help us inform our decision making, right? And so we, we miss that. And tonight we just made a quorum, right? We just made a quorum again. So here's here's an example of, of um, and, and anything you see in red here is below 50% attendance. And there's one more here that I want to show you. And you can see that Williamstown and Woodbury have had zero attendance over the last um, 14 meetings. Um, and very low. And, so Williamstown and Woodbury and Roxbury all have high un unserved and underserved uh, people and, and the, um, not having them there and not having them participating is a, it's a disadvantage, I think, uh, for them and for us. Okay. One second there. Go ahead. Great. Uh, Jeremy, could you go on mute, please, on, on, until you're speaking? Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Ray. Sorry. So I, I, I wanted you to see the... Um, you know, the, the kind of the dramatic uh, attendance or lack of attendance by some. Um, this is the this is the language for Section K that um, Alan was just talking about. And there's five five steps here. The first one has to do with the clerk. All of these, except for the last one, 
our clerk uh, performances, clerk duties, because this is a ministerial kind of thing. This isn't the, you know, this isn't the mayor of uh, CV Fiber talking to the mayor or the chair of some whatever. We don't get to that until the last step. So the first few steps are, first of all, we're, because uh, the boards are not all getting the information about what we're doing, the first step is the, all the boards and, uh, and councils, city councils get the minutes. So the, the, they'll be sent the minutes, which also means the board itself, all the delegates and alternates, including those who aren't in attendance, will get the minutes. So people are getting notice, at least they're getting the information right about what we're doing. The second one is that um, delegates who have missed two meetings in a row, uh, the clerk will notify them you've missed you've missed two meetings, you, you haven't been present, and that uh, just point out this rule. Because the next one is that when it's the three consecutive meetings, then we notify the select board that your delegates have missed three uh, three consecutive meetings, your alternates or whatever. Uh, if that still doesn't uh, do it, on the fourth consecutive meeting, uh, the clerk lets the select board and the city council know that the position has been vacated. It's been, I mean, uh, constructively, it's been vacated. The, the person isn't showing up for whatever reason. And this isn't, by the way, to point the figure on any one particular person or anything or embarrass them. It, it, the um, if, if someone hasn't been there for three or four meetings in a row, they ought to resign, right? They, they should at least go to the board and resign. The fifth step is that the CV Fiber chair will request a meeting. Uh, with the select board or the, the, the chair of the select board or the mayor, et cetera, et cetera, and talk about their participation with CV Fiber. Now, we don't have the ability to kick anybody out, okay? People vote to get in, uh, and we can't, we can't just kick them out. Uh, but we do lose the value of their participation if they're not participating. And so that's the language here, and uh, Jeremy and Tom have their heads up. So before we go any further about this, and this is kind of apropos, I just did a count, and I only count 10 people uh, because Seth O'Brien is an alternate from Cabot, and RD is the member from Cabot. So we may not actually have a quorum. Uh, it kind of rests on who is calling in by phone. I know that one is RD and one yeah. is Alan. Uh, there are two peop two other people on by phone. Are either of you uh, delegates or alternates? Uh, yeah, this is Dan Souza calling from two one two eight. I'm the alternate for Barrytown. Okay, sounds good. Oh, okay, phew. Sorry, give me a little bit of a heart attack there. <laughs> 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 oh, the <top. laughs> I know it's yeah. So I mean, uh, all right. So anyway, um, I think that this is a great idea. It adds a little bit more workload to me as clerk, but I think that is fine. Um, the suggestion that I had was, in addition to having the clerk kind of reach out to the towns to get after towns where neither the alternate nor the delegate have shown up, because that's really what I'm tracking. I'm not tracking whether the alternate showed up or whether the delegate showed up. I'm just tracking was Cabot represented, yes or no? Was Plainfield represented, yes or no? Um, I think a thing that would be, that I think we should add is that the delegates and the alternates from each town will kind of keep tabs on each other. And if the alternate isn't showing up, like, for example, uh, the Plainfield alternate has not shown up. This is going to be the third meeting. I reached out and didn't hear back from him. So I think if I don't hear back, then um, I'm going to go to Plainfield and say, hey, I haven't heard from this guy. We need to get a new alternate. And I think that that sort of a procedure should be in there as well, that if, you know, the alternate or the delegate notice that the other person hasn't shown up for a couple of meetings, they reach out and go through sort of the same process, but sort of internal within the town. And that falls on the delegates and the alternates. So let me ask you this, um, Jeremy, and let me see if I can get this on my screen here. And for some reason it's not behaving. Oh, I think it's, it's because I've done this and now I need 
now I get, now I get this up here. And that is, um, so here, you notice that the change is a change in paragraph two. The clerk will notify delegates and alternates who have missed two meetings in a row. Um, it, it previously you just said, we'll notify delegates. You think that so that I mean, that's, that's getting into a fair bit of extra work for the clerk then to track not just whether Cabot was represented, but you know, sort of further whether the alternate was there, whether the delegate was there, right? I, I'm thinking sort of like another a, a second layer of checking where you know me as. Plainfield delegate would make sure that the Plainfield alternate is also active and vice versa. Yeah, so the, the reason I don't think that's the same is that um, what you said is that whether or not they participated in the meeting, and it didn't matter whether it was the delegate or the alternate, right? For the attendance, yes. it doesn't matter whether it's alternate or delegate, it's just whether that particular town was represented. Can you suggest language? <laughs> now you're putting me on the spot. Um, some, something. Go on pause and, and, and think about something, and we'll listen to what Tom has to say, okay? You Fair enough. Some language. Tom? Um, that was the same, similar point to what I was going to, to point out, the, uh, the language there around delegate versus alternate changing. Um, and, and this, I think, probably best if, if we revisit this on a future meeting. If we if we spend some time, you're like you're making sure we get this right. Um, but we can have discussion now, I think, to help feed into that. And I, I would say, like, there was never an expectation that a delegate must attend every meeting or must attend the majority of meetings. It was that there was representation. And I think we've had delegates in the past who said, look, I'm going to be gone for four months. Should I drop out? Or should I just stay on and let the alternate take over for a while? And we've all been kind of okay with, yeah, let the alternate take over. As long as we can get business done, that's the important mm -hmm. thing. Um, I do think it would be nice if we could promote to alternates to attend. Because it, it, right now, I mean, if, if an alternate hasn't attended for a year and then shows up and is expected to make an informed decision on something, um, that's just doing us all a disservice. So... Um, I, I'm in favor of this overall, but I think we should maybe table it to the next our next meeting um, and maybe uh, clean up some of the language here. Um, but I do like the idea of, of enforcing a little bit of attendance so that we can get business done. Thanks, Tom. Uh, before we get to Linda, Jeremy, I sorry, I got to ask you again. Could you please go on mute when you're not speaking? Because it's it's disrupting. Thank you very much. Uh, OK, Linda, your turn. Uh, every town has a uh, cvfiber.net uh, email, which should make this whole process a little easier for you, Jerry, uh, uh, Jeremy, like waterberry at cvfiber.net, where you could both delegate and alternate receives that email. Uh, so it, it's not a matter of contacting them. That's that's not the difficulty. Uh, and the other point is that I suspect that a lot of the people that aren't showing up are also not checking their emails. Um, it's more the sort of the nuts and bolts of having to, you know, go through each of the minutes and say, okay, the alternate from Cabot showed up, but the delegate from Cabot didn't. So I need to parse out whether, you know, so th that's, what, that's what my suggestion is that for the clerk, it's just town by town. You know, I it's more like the clerk will notify um, the town that they are not being represented and that they need to find representation, that sort of a thing. And then within the town, I don't have a great way to phrase it. I, I wasn't able to come up with anything because my brain is fried. It's been a very long day. But something along the lines of, you know, alternates and delegates for each town will, you know, roughly monitor each other's attendance and if either is inactive, the other member will go to the board or go to the their select board and request 
a new alternate or delegate be appointed? Jeremy I think, I, I think and, and what I, I was suggesting yeah. was exactly what you were saying, Jeremy, is that by using the okay. town, you're not contacting the delegate and alternate directly. You're con contacting the two of them through the town at, you, no? Why do you say no? No, because that, that because that just pops up. It, if they are not active, it is popping up. It, it, it's going to just go to their CV Fiber email address. If they're not checking their CV Fiber email address, it doesn't matter if I email, you know, Jerry Diamantides at cvfiber.net or if I email Berlin at cvfiber.net. Right? So they both go to the same place. Yeah, it's just uh, a matter I, of, you know, I so don't want to get into having to track personal email is what you're saying that you as a clerk, you have to look up their personal email. No, instead it's, it's of nothing using... to do. It's nothing to do with the difficulty of contacting them. It's the bean counting of having to keep track of for Cabot. Did the alternate show up for Cabot? Did the delegate show up and kind of to. um I, I forget who made the point, but to, to the point that, you know, we're, we're we should be expected to show up for most, but it's more, you know, is the town being represented? I think that's the biggest point. For that's this what rule. I would like to see, too. Hey, can we allow R.D. to enter the conversation? <laughs> Cabot, Cabot's been the whipping boy here. Um, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? <laughs> My apologies, RD. <laughs> it's, it's all right. It's, oh, it's okay. Um, Cabot doesn't get a lot of notice. We're Oscar Wilde said the, the the you know as long as they're talking about you, it's okay. Um, the the problem is getting a quorum. Uh, I I've had the same experience on solid waste districts. They have a difficulty getting a quorum, but the towns that participate are happy with whatever is going down, unless it affects them specifically. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure that we need to do more than keep select boards copied with our minutes, town clerks copied with our minutes, um, delegates copied with our minutes. If we experience a, um, a significant problem with um, uh, w with quorums, at that point, the clerk can make, or the or the uh, the chair of the board can make overtures to the towns whose representation is largely inactive. Um, it's not it's not an impediment to CV Fiber's business to have um, some towns chronically unrepresented. Their unrepresentation and their failure to, uh, to address their unrepresentation, in my view, signifies assent to what CV Fiber is doing. Um, and um, so, I'm not sure that we need so, to com complexify our, um, our uh, uh, rules of procedure to lay an extra onus on the clerk to track these um, I, 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 I say this without disparagement, these delinquencies, um, they don't necessarily affect the ability of CV fiber to do business as long as we can get a quorum for each of our meetings. Okay. So I see that Tom wants to re-enter the, the discussion, please. Tom. I think therein lies the rub, RD. I mean, we nearly didn't have quorum at this meeting, and um, we need to address that somehow. This is not the first time that we've nearly or even missed having quorum, um, and we need to make sure that this is, doesn't keep happening. Um, I guess so. My my, my question uh, at this point would be, and I'm thinking we'll come back to this in the future, but looking down at like steps four and five there, um, mm -hmm. what does that mean procedurally? If if we have officially said, okay, we consider this seat vacated. Are we legally allowed to continue with only nine people um, as a quorum or something? Yeah. Like, is there, are we still stuck until essentially somebody's select board gets another person who does show up to a meeting? 
I, I believe we're still stuck uh, because the there's there's an official number of 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 towns and 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 we're stuck with that. I, I I'd like to let Siobhan into the conversation. She hasn't had uh, an answer uh, input yet. I. Uh... Where where we're where I'm running into concern and where and I know that Linda has shared this in the past is Hang the on. towns that are no. not being re represented don't know what's going on. It's not just that they aren't having a voice on the board, but the citizens don't know what's going on. Elmore is well, no, is oh, no Woodbury. Woodbury, I think, is the example that that Linda has, where she's spoken to people from Woodbury who have no idea what's going on with CV fiber. They just kind of assume things are tooling along. They don't get any reports back. They're not getting any information, and so Woodbury hasn't been asked for funding for ARPA funds. I think. Um, well, I think they got an indirect ask from the, from Jerry, but that doesn't have the same direct touch as a, a member going to the select board and saying something. And and I think that, that it's not just us hitting quorum, but it's also the people of the town having their voices heard um, and and getting reports back and hearing back on what's going on. I think that that matters. Um, in the in the long run, um, I, I guess I'm done. Thank, thank, thanks, Siobhan. Uh, so Jeremy and RD, you both have your hands up. Are those residual or is this additional? Because Ad additional, additional. Okay, Jeremy, go first, and then RD. Uh, Ray, I was wondering if I could share my screen to show some of the um, attendance stuff that I think kind of highlights this. If you notice, in the last year, the last time that we had more than three quarters of towns represented was August of last year. Since then, we have missed a meeting, and that's partly my fault uh, because I wasn't there either. Uh, but there was one meeting uh, where we did not achieve quorum, and we had to you know, quickly call another meeting. There are also these two meetings here where we, you know, we're one more than quorum. This one I haven't put in yet, but is going to be 11 out of 21. We need to get this figured out. Well, point taken. RD, go ahead, sir. Okay, can, am I being heard? Yes, please. Good. The, um, Ensuring that the people of the town are represented is the responsibility of select boards and city councils. That's not our responsibility. Um, we offer every opportunity for representation. Um, and, uh, and I think that's, that's the responsibility of municipal governments. Um, I, I, perhaps we ought to have another look at our charter and see if we can redefine quorum in such a way that makes it easier for us to do business. Uh, I had to face the same problem with a solid waste district uh, to which Cabot belonged, and the solid waste district was having difficulty getting um, uh, getting a quorum together, and the, 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 the problem originates in, in the charter itself. Um, but, um, but I think we're, we're, we're undertaking too much responsibility when we make ourselves responsible for seeing to it that the individual towns are proper, the residents of individual towns are properly represented. That's my point. Well, l let me ask a question here. Are there sufficient changes to the policy that the, to the uh, recommendation here that isn't even a motion yet? Is there a sufficient change to make a motion out of this, or should is this something that we're going to table and and either bring back in two pieces and and do an A and a B because I think we're very close to the A about getting a quorum and then there's B about chasing individual delegates. Uh, we do need to move forward because we spent a lot of time on this, um, and maybe maybe folks should attend uh, policy committee meetings and and refine it there if that's if that's what what needs to happen um 
I see a number of hands up and I see a number of folks that aren't on mute that aren't talking. So let me go to Tom Fisher, Jeremy and RD and see if we can close this out, please. Uh, one thing uh, for further consideration of as we move this forward in the policy committee is do we want to also address quorum issues at uh, committees or is that an issue um, that needs to be addressed? Um, and I guess I'll leave that to the chairs of the committees to, to decide if they think we need to go that far. It, it purposefully wasn't in this item. This was meant to be a very specific uh, item. Uh, Jeremy, were you next on that list? Or is your hand down now? My hand is down now. Okay. Um, RD, why don't you close out this discussion, sir? I, I, I would suggest we table this discussion and, uh, and kick the question back to the policy committee. Uh, Alan, you started this? Yeah, I started it. <laughs> I, 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 I dropped off, by the way, because I had uh, one phone go out and I had to find another one, so I might drop out again. But is there a motion that's on the floor now? No, uh, sir. Was there a motion? What was we didn't there a motion even... to ad was there a motion to adopt the 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 policy or, or the rule rather? The the, the 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 motion for the net neutrality passed, and what we're talking about now for the delegate attendance never got to a motion. Um, and, there have been some changes made. Like Bart, and now it sounds like RD has made a motion to table discussion. Is that correct? It was a request. Uh, Perhaps it is a motion. It was a suggestion. I don't think we need a motion to table since there's no motion on the table. There's no motion before us. Okay, well, I'll make a motion then. I'll move that we adopt the rule as presented, just so we can keep going on this. <laughs> I second. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> and Linda seconds. Okay, so... Uh, and then the other thing we can do, if we want to, if we want to settle this tonight... Um, I could I could call the question and we could we could take a vote on this uh, and move forward that way. We if can't call the, the question, hand, right? What's that? We can't call questions. Wasn't that a one of the policies? Can't call the vote. Uh, can we do that? And I, I don't <laughs> I don't have my stuff in front of me because I have no power. This is really awful. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we do have other business on the agenda, and we've spent, uh, I don't know, maybe almost half an hour here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought we can't cut off discussion, um, but we can call the question. But we I, can I, call I, the question. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that, R.D. Uh, we can call the uh, Under Robert's rules, we can call the question. But yeah, um, and I think I, yeah, I, I, but I, but I would prefer right to here. offer a motion. Sorry, I would prefer to offer a motion to table. I think we have a motion on already between uh, have, Alan and myself. Alan's the right. chair there of the policy. Motion. I'm the vice chair. There, there is a motion. There is a motion, um, and I would move to table the question. I believe that's in order. Yeah, you can do that if you want, and and that would mean that that that, that we don't discuss this anymore tonight. It's not there's this any we just we're essentially cutting off. But we off can bring it up again at a future meeting. Yeah, I we think bring we will bring it up again. Take it off the table at a future meeting. Right. Jeremy and Matt seconded RD's request to table. Do we need to take a vote on that request to table? Yes. All right, then let's take a vote on that request to table. Uh, I know I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, any opposed to the request so, to table. Jerry, yeah. I Jerry can, I, can I just say why? Can I say why before we do that? Just to sure, Jeremy. Go ahead. I, I think that this is a really good idea. I think it's necessary, but I think that it needs more needs some refining. Uh, und understood. So, uh, so I, I heard. Let, let's let's take a vote then, because I heard an opposition. Uh, 
Jeremy, help me keep count here because it's very difficult to, to know who's who counts as a delegate and who doesn't count as a delegate. Okay. Okay. Votes to table. Do you, do you, hold, hold on just hold on just a sec. I need to get uh, some some notes down here. Um, do you want me to do the roll call because I have the attendance in front that, of me? That would be excellent. Please do the roll call. Okay. Um, uh, Would you state the motion, Jerry? I mean, the the motion before the uh, the board is to table the motion to adopt the policy. That is correct, sir. Thank you. All right. So, sorry. Bear with me, real quick here. Um. So, uh, Alan Gilbert. No. This is the motion to table. Right. No. So, and you voted no. Okay. Correct. Uh, David Healy. Yes. Uh, David Lawrence. S sorry, I was muted. No. Uh, David Lawrence. Jerry Diamantides. Yes, table. Uh, R.D. Yes. Uh, Ray Pelletier. Well, I'm opposed to solid waste, R.D., but I'm going to support the motion to table. <laughs> uh, Siobhan Paracon. Ah! <laughs> Is that an I? I am so tired of this policy already. I'm going to say no. I'm I'm ready. Uh, Henry Amistadi. Uh, yes. Uh, Jeremy, Matt, I'm going to vote yes. Uh, Linda Gravel. No. You'll notice all the policy all right. people that are on the committee are saying no, because we've been through this already three meetings. <laughs> uh, well, the uh, we have one, two, three, four no's and one, two, three, four, five, six eyes. So the eyes have it. Uh, I haven't been asked. It's tabled. Oh, uh, right. I'm sorry. Uh, Tom. Yes. I'm sorry about that. Yes. And then actually also um, Dan Souza also needs to. Yes. All right. But OK, so the motion to table still uh, passes. Some of these yeses better show up at the policy committee. That's all I can say. <laughs> yes, indeed, Linda. Okay, that's 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 what we need to do. This um, this this is the this is the place to uh, you know thumbs up or thumbs down. Not really the place to develop these. So if you want input into development, please show up at the policy meeting with your suggestions. They can be by email. I, I would that, just, that would be I just, fine. I would just note that the people who aren't here didn't vote. <laughs> point point taken, Ray. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Janiel, uh, I, I would like to move on with some update on the communication committee RFPs. Jeremy, you have your hand up. Are we moving forward, sir? No, That's we're not moving no forward. Apologies. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, communi yes. uh, Communications Committee RFPs. Thank you, Janiel, please. We had four very promising uh, responses to our bid for public engagement and marketing. We have those interviews scheduled with the four firms uh, this week and next. We will be reviewing the responses that we receive from those interviews 
Um, and our goal is to have a kickoff meeting with our chosen vendor by the 25th of this month. One of the most important things that we're asking our vendors for is how they will integrate with Crowd Fiber in integrating into our website so that we can get subscribers. Excellent, Janiel. Thank you. And this is a, a, a very time consuming activity here for Janiel. Um, is there, are there any questions for Janiel on how this is moving forward? Okay, thank you. So let's let's move on to a, 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 a executive committee charter recommendation. I don't know if I have this wording quite right. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm handing this over to Ray or if I'm handing this over to Alan. It might be easier to hand it over to Ray uh, because he's got the visual. Uh, Ray, will you take this? Yeah, please. Yeah, please. So um, and what I can tell you is that there's an awful lot going on in the um, uh, in all the work you just heard, Janiel. You just uh, just the tip of the iceberg with regard to what is going on, and um, what we're looking for is uh, the the board adopts policies. The board adopts policies. The executive committee executes those policies. And in, and in so doing, they have to set up guidelines uh, to follow to implement those those policies. And what this um, what this uh, motion is about is about establishing what those guidelines are. So that the guidelines describe a set of actions that fulfill policy. And so the motion is that the we change the, the board approves a change to the executive committee charger char, charter to take such actions as appropriate to oversee, manage, and direct the day-to-day -day operations of CV Fiber, including but not limited to the adoption of guidelines to guidelines to govern CV Fiber activities. Any such guidelines shall be distributed to the board when established. So you, the board will become aware of what the executive committee is doing uh, when it adopts these guidelines. I'm happy to answer any questions for you. I, what I would tell you is um, among those uh, let's see if I have that here. Yeah, da, 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 da. I sent out by mail the um, uh, the implementation guideline changes. For example, that if if this, if the charter change is approved, the executive committee will make the make these changes. Otherwise, we would be spending our board time going through and explaining um, what each of these changes are and why we're making these particular changes. Um, and so I put it to you that um, the executive committee might be in the best position in order to go through all of these, uh, these kinds of things. So that's the motion. I second. We have, a, we have a second by RD. Is there additional discussion on this? Um, motion. It, it's it's hard for me to see. I see Tom Fisher. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry, finding the mute button. Uh, Ray, I was wondering if you could give an example um, of where this fits between just doing regular daily business uh, and a whole policy change, um, like a hard example. Like, I, mean, I, I saw you showed one up there on the screen real quick, but. Um, what are, Can I give one? I have I have one off the top of my head that happened just today. Go for it. We have we 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 have a new warehouse. Janelle, Janelle went and got keys made. How many keys and who gets them? <laughs> do 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 we want to bring that to the board? <laughs> that, that's that that's that's the the day to day kind of decisions that we're talking about. So we have guidelines on, okay, who's responsible for holding keys for the warehouse, as opposed to, uh, you know, having this mixed up with policy considerations. And, and so what the, what the board did, however, was first it, appor it, it approved us a warehouse, uh, doing a warehouse lease. It approved the budget line items for a warehouse. 
And so it improved the things. And now what we're doing is we're implementing those things. We're going to put a fence around the, the yard to make secure for the reels of fiber that we're getting, for example. We're going to set up this warehouse. It's going to have power. It's going to have internet. And we're going to hire some people in order to receive the goods on Friday. And those are, those are just implementing the, the big decisions that the board has made. I think this makes total sense. I'm wondering if there's a is there a level at which you'd say, ah, that's actually more of a policy decision, or, or like, where would you find that line? You know, I, I think uh, um, it may be kind of gray, but what I would say to you is this, um, that we will, the executive committee will publish the guidelines to the board. If the board, upon reviewing that, thinks that we've gone into a policy area, they can bring it. They can bring it up at the next board meeting, and we can review it. We can answer the questions, and if we've gone over the line, then we'll rat it, we'll we'll fix it. We'll fix it. I like that. Thanks. So we have a motion. We have a second. Is there additional discussion? Let's take a vote then, please. Any opposed to this motion? Any abstention? I hear no no abstentions, no opposition. The motion motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, everybody. This is this really un, un, we had our shoelaces tied together until we had this. Thank you very I much. Think, I really think helps. that all of the delegates who show up to the meetings should get a copy of the keys. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I do not want a copy of the keys. <laughs> okay, so um, we have two items coming up here that are very important. We, for construction scheduling, we have Jason Neely. I hope he's still here. Um, we have we have Jason that we're we're going to ask to talk for a few minutes about how our construction scheduling moves forward. We also have some financial planning information uh, that is extremely sensitive, and I would also add that our construction scheduling, in order to describe it appropriately, is extremely sensitive. So we have two items here that we are going to move into executive session over. Uh, so I, I just I just want to point that out to folks. And when we move into executive session, I believe we are going to want to ask that Jason Neely, of course, be a part of our executive session, be out of the necessity of the information that he has to share. I don't know who else, I think everybody else on the line is a, either a delegate or an employee and doesn't doesn't need uh John Walters helps us with our PR if he's still on here. I have a hard time telling who's on and who's not. Um, so um, is there is there a motion out there that we move into executive session? Do we do we have that already? Oh, RD has his hand up though first. So move. I so move. Well, it's in the chat room, uh, Jerry. And so thank you. Move that we yeah. enter an executive session to discuss records that are confidential pursuant to 1 VSA Section 313 Alpha 6, specifically construction scheduling and financial plans that relate to our strategic planning. And that staff, um, John Walters, uh, Jason Neely, um, and any delegate or alternate is required, uh, if one for our quorum, <laughs> and also uh, who are members of the board uh, to stay on, we, we, we will wind up. Um, in accordance with 1 VSA Section 313, bravo. Of course, we're going to stop recording. I, what I would add Second. to this is that there'll be a motion that comes out of this with regard to financial planning. Uh, there's nothing expected for construction scheduling. So if you're, you're part of a quorum, don't go anywhere. Please. Or we send okay. The, RD will send solid waste to all of those folks who disagree. <laughs> Okay, so now now that we've had that motion, we do require a second at this time. Second. RD second. second, thank you. Okay, can't second before the motion, RD. Sorry. So now <laughs> I already made the motion. All right, um, and we don't need to take a vote on this. We can now just move into executive session. Is that correct? No, 
No, we, it's a motion. We need they, to vote on it. Yeah. Oh, we do need to vote. I, uh, my apologies. Any any opposed to going into executive session on these issues? Any abstentions on this? No opposition, no, no abstentions. So it's unanimous. We're going into executive session at 7.08. I am going to stop the recording. I will let you know when that recording has stopped and we will be in executive Our session. Question. Christian, oh, I will you, Christian. finish the minutes from there and send the notes off to you. So thank, thank you. you so much. And, and I will send the video. Uh, okay. The recording has stopped. We are now in executive session. Thank you.